Well, good evening and welcome to these services of the Ripley Baptist Temple on this Sunday night, May 17th. What a joy it is to come your way uh, online uh, by Facebook, also by YouTube, and then uh, our phone-in number, and some of you are calling in, and we welcome you to these services, and we're looking forward to the day real soon where we'll be able to meet here on, on site. We had a great service this morning. God gave us another beautiful sunshiny day out in the parking lot and uh, God willing next week we'll be moving in here with two services at 9 30 and then again at 11 o'clock next Sunday morning May 24th so it's going to be a great day and uh, we thank God for his many blessings and uh, tonight's going to be a little different service uh, we'll, we'll not be meeting as as often like this once we come back into the services and so um, we're going to do a little something a little different in a little while we'll be I'll be preaching a short message tonight um, and then we're going to step over here uh, myself and our pastoral staff and we'll be uh, fielding some questions that uh, have been submitted today uh, about a number of topics and we just thought we'd have a little uh, Q&A time discussion time uh, from the Bible and, um, and, and I trust it'll be a, a help to you. And so uh, we won't drag it on. It'll be uh, hopefully helpful and encouraging. And um, let's begin tonight, though, with a, with a great song. Brother Adam's going to come and lead us in that great old song, Redeemed, How I Love to Proclaim It. I'd like to give a little shout out, a buddy of mine, Mr. Brady is out there with his guitar tonight. So you grab your guitar and we're going to play this one together, all right? Reading how I love to proclaim it, reading by the blood of the Lamb, reading through His infinite mercy, His child and Thank you, Brother Adam. If you're redeemed, say amen out there. And uh, it's a joy to be saved. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you for this wonderful day. And this is the day you've made. Help us to rejoice and be glad in it. Thank you for the Lord's Day. And thank you, Lord, for those that gathered here on site. And thank you for those that tuned in by way of the Internet and uh, for this uh, great group of people that are watching tonight. Bless us, our God, we pray. Lord, we pray for our nation. Oh, God, send revival. Thank you for the five days in May we've experienced last week, Monday through Friday, joining hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of other believers uh, begging you for revival. And, Lord, I do again tonight ask you to give revival to our great land, give wisdom and direction to our leaders, uh, touch our people, and, uh, God, we pray that you'd rid us of this virus and, Lord, I pray that we could go on and get on with the Father's business. And for the King's business, Lord, we know requires haste. Bless this service tonight, all that we do in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, it's a blessing tonight to have our hometown highlight video. 
You know, I've really enjoyed, we've, we've had a lot of good feedback from these hometown highlights. Uh, people that don't even attend our church have commented how much they've enjoyed hearing from our people. And I think I sense in these hometown highlights, I think I sense a, um, a new direction, a new desire um, by our people, a new excitement to get back in church and to get on with the affairs of life. And uh, tonight, we have Rich and Marcy Smith. We appreciate Rich and Marcy. They were here this morning. And uh, it's funny, as, as I preach on the parking lot, I'm seeing our people. And then also, I'm looking into the camera. And today, as I was looking into the camera, uh, I think the first Sunday over on Easter Sunday, I was looking right right into the in Jim and Misty Knight's uh, eyeball to eyeball right over their dashboard. Today, I was looking at Don and Darlene Johnson and Rich and Marcy Smith as I was preaching, looking into the camera. And um, but I, we love Rich and Marcy. They work with our Cubbies uh, program on uh, Wednesday night, and I appreciate uh, Marcy's involvement in our choir and what a blessing they are to our church. And uh, right now, the Smiths. Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Rich and Marcy Smith Home. We sure miss the fellowship with everybody and not being able to go to church. And one thing I know is I certainly took it for granted before all this started to just to go to church and see people we love. And I miss that now and I'll definitely appreciate it more when we get to do, come back together. I also miss Cubbies and the leaders there and the boys and girls and Miss Marcy, you can say a little more. Okay. <laughs> We're just so thankful for Pastor Rick, Pastor Grant, Pastor Seth, and, and all they've done um, to make it possible so that we can have these online services. And appreciate, especially appreciate Adam Hager and his IT expertise. He just does a great job. We're just so thankful for all the messages we've been able to watch and to hear um, online. We really enjoyed the revival and didn't miss a, a message. They were all great. I'm so thankful um, for Pastor Rick's messages. They have really spoken to my heart. And yes, we certainly do miss our cubbies every Wednesday night. Cubby Bear. Hi, oh, Miss Marcy. Oh, it's so good to see you. When you were talking about cubbies, I thought about how much I miss Lovey Lamb. And especially the boys and girls, Miss Marcy. I really miss them. Oh, Cubby Bear, I know exactly how you feel because we will we really miss them too. Miss Marcy? Yes. Can we have some peanut butter batter cookies to eat tonight? Oh, Cubby Bear, sure. You're such a good little bear. I think that would be a good idea. Okay, we love you all. Bye. Bye bye. Well, thank you, Rich and Marcy and uh, Cubby Bear. I think we're going to stop by for some of those cookies this evening after church. That sounds pretty good. And uh, thank you for sending in that hometown highlight. Tonight, also, we have a special song on the piano. We miss uh, uh, Janet Jenkins and Jim, and we appreciate the, their involvement with our choir and special music. And, and uh, of course, uh, Janet's mother, Mary Ainsley, we thank God for Mary, been praying for Mary, and uh, as she is homebound there, and uh, you know, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, and the Lord will bless you, and I believe that these that are caring for their parents uh, in their golden years, I, I believe there's a special blessing from God for them, and we appreciate Janet, she's going to play for us right now. <laughs>
and thank you for that, Miss Janet. What a blessing. And I certainly miss that. I miss the live music here in our services and here in your offertories. And just, I miss the congregational singing. I miss singing all here together. And uh, hopefully you are singing together as, as Brother Adam leads us here on Sunday nights and Wednesday nights. And as Brother Mitch leads us out there in the parking lot, it's kind of hard to tell through the, the windshields if people are singing along or not. But I can't wait until we can be back all together again singing. Just for a few announcements here this evening, I would like to remind you of this, that uh, we, we do have the, the phone service where you can call in and you can, you can listen to these services. I know many of you are watching tonight. You are obviously watching through the, the Facebook Live or the YouTube Live, but maybe there's someone that you know that could greatly benefit by this service. And that number, I believe it's on the screen there probably, is 855-527-3010. Once again, that's 855-527-3010. And if you have trouble maybe adding someone, we can help you out with that if you call into the church, and we can help add them to that so they get the notifications and they can be uh, a part of all of this. And I believe it was mentioned this morning, but we're looking forward to next Sunday. I've enjoyed the drive-in services, but I can't wait until we're back on location inside the building together. And this coming Sunday, we will be having our renewed normal next Sunday. And I really like the name of that. You know, we, we keep talking about getting back to the normal or the new normal that we live in. Hey, it needs to be a renewed normal. Well, hopefully, and just as we heard in that, that video uh, by Brother Rich and Miss Marcy, uh, we've all missed being together in church, and we've missed seeing one another and, and all of these things. Hopefully, we have a greater appreciation for these things, and hopefully we've grown close to the Lord through this uh, unusual time. But next Sunday is a renewed normal, and at the 930 hour, that is for our senior citizens, those a little older. That's for that, that service as you can come in for those. And then at 11, this will be our service for families with children. And we have more of an emphasis on that. We'll be having some things that will be done for our kids. And I know we've missed junior church and Sunday school with them over the last uh, several weeks. And during those two services, we're, we'll make sure we'll sanitize everything. And we encourage you, if you'd like to and you feel comfortable doing so, to wear a mask and... Um, we're asking those that come in at 9.30, as Pastor mentioned this morning, come in through these doors, and we'll help you out with the seating in here. We'll have the, the seats uh, roped off every other. But if you come for that 11 o'clock service, and if you get here a little bit early, we encourage you to come in the doors here at the end of our church near the gym, and uh, we'll have an area in there where you can mill around there in the, the gym and not being too close to everyone and all of that. And uh, we'll, we'll no actual nursery, but we'll have some rooms available for mothers with uh, some children uh, if you need to have use of that. And then on uh, May 23rd, also, there's a drop-off baby shower for Matthew and Catherine Taylor uh, from 1 o'clock until 5 uh, p.m. If you'd like any more information about that, you can call the church, and we can, we can help you out with that. Then our Young Adult Refresh uh, Conference. I'm super excited about this. I'm pumped about this. That is just two weeks from this weekend. Evangelist Scott Polly will be coming, and uh, we have been planning this for some time now, uh, for probably about over a year or more. We've been planning to have uh, Brother Polly here, and he, he's one of my favorite preachers. He always, always get a challenge. And maybe some of you uh, listen to his podcast, Enjoying the Journey, or maybe you see his blog from time to time. He is just a challenge and, and just an encouragement for all of us. And so we have that, uh, our Refresh Conference, and that was normally there. It was supposed to be all day there on the 30th. But we have just, we've kind of made this a young adult and teen weekend. And on 7 p, at 7 p.m. on that Friday, on May 29th, we'll be having a session by Brother Kevin Bartlett, and he'll be speaking on music. And that's something that affects all of our lives. We're always listening to things. I love listening to music, good, godly Christian music. And he'll be talking about the importance of it. And we'll, be, we'll, we'll have a session there at 7 p.m. on that Friday. And then on Saturday morning, I'll give a brief devotional there to start out our day at 9.30 a.m. At 2 o'clock, Pastor Lee Swore will be giving a session on having your devotions, spending time with God. And I think that's something that hopefully we've all uh, growing close to the Lord during this time. It's so important to have that devotional time. And then that evening, we'll have a live session here on site with evangelist Scott Polly. And we've encouraged our teens and our young adults to go ahead and come. We're going to spread you out here in the auditorium like what we'll be doing this coming Sunday. 
and uh, we encourage you to come. We're going to have a great time that night with special music, and there'll be some games. And we're also making this a live stream event. Now, I've invited many people to the event there on our, our Facebook event page. You can go there and find out there on our page here on Facebook. And I've encouraged you this morning that you can go and you can invite people to tune into that event. Maybe they don't even live around here, but young adults and teenagers, you know, we just need to make the most of this opportunity to encourage teens, to encourage young adults. I also, as I mentioned this morning, we're going to have a special video shown that night for men of God that have faithfully served God for many years all across our country, from California to Texas to up to Pennsylvania to down to Georgia. And they're going to give a word of advice of wisdom for young adults and teenagers. You won't want to miss it. And also our church family, you feel welcome to join in and tune in that evening. Of course, it'll be open for our teens and uh, young adults. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. And then that Sunday, my brother Polly will be with us there all day on that Sunday. And uh, you won't want to miss that. And I neglected, I just realized looking down at my notes here, I neglected to mention for our Renew Normal service next Sunday, that in the morning we'll have those two services, but in the evening at 6.30 uh, we'll, have, we'll be on, online once again for all of our church family. But we'll also have a time for those that, that, that come that are deacons, trustees, uh, workers, bus workers, that help in these different ministries, that you will meet here together and we'll have some meetings with them. And we're looking forward to that time there on that Sunday evening. And talking about all that, uh, uh, we're also going to have a one awards early June when you can finish those books, and we'll be, there'll be more said about that in the days ahead. And we've just enjoyed these uh, children's spotlight videos. I missed it when we had our children up here, but uh, hopefully it won't be long. We'll see how all that, that, that takes place, and hopefully it won't be long until we can have them up here once again. And about this time, we're going to have our children's spotlight video once again. Mark 16, 15, Jesus said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Matthew 6, 21, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. John 1, 12, But as men received him, to then gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. James 1, 17, Every good gift and every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variableness, neither the shadow of turning. James 1, 17. Deuteronomy 6, 18. And thou shalt do which is right and good in the sight of the Lord. Psalm 119, 89. Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Stand up, stand up for Jesus, ye soldiers of the trust. And I, his royal banners, it must not suffer lost. As now my every word and deed, Jesus longs to meet my deepest need. He lives now to intercede. He will surely stand by me. My God is a righteous God. My God is a holy God. My God is a faithful God. He will surely stand by me. Amen. We've already gotten some special music there, but we're thankful for all those that have sent in uh, special music. And once again here tonight, we've enjoyed, uh, they've already made a few appearances already, but we're looking forward to hearing the Garber Girls, and they'll be singing all the way. God searched for a limit to his love. What would he keep? What would he give up to pay sin's awful price for such a worthless one as I to rescue me? Just how far would he go? All the way, he came all the way for me, all the way. Step to take. 
take. If I believe, then he will take me all the way. I think about that city he's prepared. When I arrive, I'll know who placed me there. For my efforts fall so short of the glory of the Lord. He knew they would, so he came all the way. All the Thank you, girls. What a great song. The Bible says this is the confidence that we have in Him, that if we ask anything according to His will, He heareth us. And if we know that He hears us, we know that we have the petitions that we desired of Him. And then the Bible says, being confident of this very thing, that he that hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. All the way our Savior leads us. Let's take our Bibles, turn to Mark chapter 2 tonight. Mark chapter 2, I'll be preaching about 10 minutes tonight. And then we're going to do a question and answer time up here on the platform. There are a lot of questions that people have about these disturbing times. But these are exciting days in which we live. Mark's gospel chapter 2, and the Bible says, And again he entered, speaking of Jesus, into Capernaum. And after some days, the Bible says it was noised that he was in the house. When the Lord's in the house, people know it. The Bible says that straightway many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not so much as about the door, and he preached the word unto them. Our Lord Jesus was a preacher. He was a preacher man, and uh, he preached the word. And they came unto him, it says in verse 3, it says, They come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy. I like the way the Gospel of Mark words these things. It's like it's in the first person, I believe, is how he often uh, records his inspired text. They come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. And when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, they uncovered the roof where he was. The press would not represent the press that you see on the news every night, but the press being the great crowd, the press of people. The Bible says they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed therein, uh, the sick of the palsy lay. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. I want to speak just a couple of moments tonight on this subject, rooftop faith. The Bible says that Jesus saw their faith. Where did he see their faith? He saw their faith up on the rooftop. You know, I believe that real faith, saving faith, will take you to heaven. And I believe that serving faith will take you to new heights. I believe that our faith can grow. I believe that our faith can be expanded. I believe that our faith ought to be expended as we grow in grace. And our faith ought to be a growing faith. If there's ever a time that, that our faith ought to be growing, if there's ever a time that our faith ought to be seen, if there's ever a time that our, our faith ought to be expanded, if there's ever a time that our faith ought to be on display, it ought to be right now. It's a wonderful story. In this great gospel of action, the scripture says that Jesus came and entered into Capernaum after some days. He had moved from Nazareth over to Capernaum. His own people there, his own neighbors, even his own family had rejected the Lord Jesus and he moved to Capernaum and made Capernaum his ministry station. Well, let's make our prayer and as we pray tonight, let's ask God to help us 
this evening. And uh, we want to pray for Pastor Jay Hubbard of the Gospel Baptist Church in Torch. Just received word right here on the platform as the service began that he's had some real health issues. We pray for him and his church, his dear wife Sharon, and uh, all their family. Father, I pray that tonight you'd bless this message, uh, bless this service, bless the Word of God. Lord, we pray for our, our brothers in Christ, our sisters in Christ, our sister churches. God, we thank you for the Gospel Baptist Church tonight in Torch, Ohio. We thank you for Brother Hubbard, his friendship, his faithfulness to you. God bless his wife and family and son-in-law. I pray, God, that you would uh, help him to get better. I pray that you'd touch him. I pray that you'd raise him up. And, and uh, God, I pray that you'd strengthen him physically and spiritually in body, soul, and spirit. Touch this man of God, we pray. Touch this message in Jesus' name. Amen. And so these four, it's a wonderful story in the Bible. The Bible says Jesus had moved his ministry uh, over to Capernaum and uh, around the Sea of Galilee there, and it was noise that he was in the house. There were so many people gathered in this place that they could not get one more person in the door. Now, I've been in some crowded services before, and you have too. I've been in some that were packed out, packed and jammed, every pew filled, extra seats set out. There's nothing more exciting uh, than, than a full church. And that's why it's been such a challenge while we've been going through this, these last eight weeks, nine weeks now. Uh, that's why it's been such a challenge to preach to empty pews. And uh, there's something about a full building. There's something about numbers. Uh, numbers are not everything. You don't have to have great numbers to be serving God. Many of you serve in places where there's not great numbers. But I want you to know that every number represents a soul for whom Jesus died and the Bible says God's not willing that any should perish and that all, that all should come to repentance. For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever believeth in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. And so the Bible says that He was, he was here and uh, the place was packed. But I've never been in a service that I didn't feel like we could get one more in the door. In fact, I don't know, I've been in many services where I didn't think I'd get five more. This fellow had been carried to the service. He was carried on this couch or some type of a stretcher or something. And uh, these four men, who we do not know their names, they bring their friend to Jesus. And by the way, whoever brought you to Jesus is a dear friend. Whoever brought you to Jesus, whoever told you about Christ, whoever has been witnessing to you about Christ, they're the greatest friend that you have other than Jesus. The Bible says many were gathered together insomuch that there was no room to receive them, no, not some, uh, as much about the door. And the Bible says he preached the word unto them. Now look, they brought their friend to Jesus. They carry him out there. It took unity. It took determination. It took uh, uh, a sense of purpose. If we can get our friend to Christ, his need will be met. They come there. The door is packed and jammed. They can't get the door open. They can't come in through the window. They tell me out in these country churches how years ago that, uh, you know, they would they'd, they'd prop up the windows and the, the buildings would be so packed and jammed and uh, these circuit riding preachers would come through holding revivals and, and they'd prop up the windows and people would lean in the windows to hear the Word of God. They couldn't get this fellow in. Most of us would have sent him home. Most of us would say, well, it's not God's will. Most of us would have said, well, let's take him back and we'll bring him tomorrow night or we'll bring him. But there was a sense of urgency the Bible says one of them probably walked over there. I can picture this. He probably walked over there and said, Well, fellas, we've come this far by faith. We've gotten him here. There's one more way we can get him in. And so they took him to the rooftop. Their faith took them to the rooftop. Their faith produced something. Real faith, the Bible says that faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Faith is substantive and faith is evidential. By the way, let me add this, faith is essential, Hebrews eleven six, 6. And so it says they, they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press or the crowd, they uncovered the roof where he was, and when they had broken it up, they let down the bed therein, wherein the sick of the palsy lay. I've always tried to picture this. Our church here has a, has a great, beautiful, wooden, uh, A-frame type look. But probably this was more of an apartment flat. Uh, around Israel, above the Sea of Galilee, there, there are flats still today. More kind of like apartments, flat-roofed places. 
they carry their friend up over the wall. They get him up there on the roof. And the Bible says they uncovered the roof where Jesus was. I can see him as he's preaching. I can picture him as he's preaching and, and maybe, some, maybe some dust begins to, to fall. And, and there's some commotion on the roof. And, and you know how it is when you're in church and something happens kind of off the wall and, and it gets everybody's attention. It might be a bumblebee flying around. I, I baptized in Spencer, West Virginia, Spencer Baptist Temple a few years ago. Got in the baptistry and we had a bumblebee nest right over the baptistry and we had all these bumblebees flying around and landing in the baptistry next to me. I'm very allergic to bees. And so I was pushing these bumblebees. They were doing the backstroke trying to survive and I was trying to drown them while I was talking to people and trying to baptize these people. And, and uh, you know, anything that happens in church out of the ordinary gets everybody's attention. It might be a bee flying around. It, it might be a baby crying. It might be uh, somebody's asleep. It might be any number of things. And, and here they are. All of a sudden there's a commotion on the roof and suddenly there's an opening in the roof and suddenly uh, the dust begins to fall and, and maybe some of the roof begins to fall into the crowd and people begin to, to, to part there and, and suddenly they look down through the roof and, and uh, they lower their friend to Jesus. It took unity. It took strength. It took determination. And, and it, they had to believe that if they got their friend to Jesus... His need would be met. The Bible says when Jesus saw their faith, where was their faith? Their faith was up there. It took one of them saying, fellas, let's get with it. Let's get our friend to Jesus. We've got him here. He's this close. Maybe you're listening tonight. You're that close. You say, I'm that close to getting saved, Pastor. But you might as well be that far away. Come to Christ tonight. Now is the day of salvation. Today is, is the day. Now is the accepted time. When Jesus saw their faith, He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. He met His spiritual need first. By the way, that's a whole lot different than what you see on television a lot of these guys today. These so-called healers. I believe in healing, but I don't believe in faith healers. Come on. Not too many, not too many amens out there tonight. <laughs> we have a healer in heaven. And if it's God's will to heal, God can heal. He's the great physician. But I want you to know where Jesus put the emphasis. Jesus put the emphasis on his heart healing. Jesus put the emphasis on him being saved. He met his spiritual need. Later, he would meet his physical need. And so I want you to notice, rooftop faith always includes the Savior. You can't have faith without the Savior. Notice in verse 1, He entered into Capernaum. Notice that it was noise that He was in the house. Notice that He preached the word unto them. Notice they come unto Him. The emphasis is on Him. The emphasis, as far as our faith is concerned, ought to always be the Savior. Secondly, I want you to notice, rooftop faith involved the soul winner. The Bible says, He that winneth souls is wise. During this time of, uh, of isolation, May we be reaching out. During this time of separation, may we be coming closer to the Savior and closer to others. Though we may not be able to touch physically, we can touch people with our prayers and touch people with our witness and touch people with the love of God. It involved the soul winner. The Bible says when they could not come nigh to Him for the press, they uncovered the roof where He was. How bad do you want to see someone get saved? Notice number three, rooftop faith invites the sinner. In verse 5, when Jesus saw their faith, He said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Come now, God said, let's reason together, saith the Lord. Though your sins be as scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool. It invites the sinner. But notice this about rooftop faith. Not only that, but rooftop faith always infuriates the skeptics. There's always that crowd sitting around criticizing. Verse 6, there were certain of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, saying, why did this man thus speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God only? But little did they understand that God only was with them. God in human flesh. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And immediately when Jesus perceived in His Spirit that they so reasoned within themselves. He said unto them, Why reason ye these things in your hearts? 
Whether is it easier to say to the sick of the palsy, Thy sins be forgiven thee, or to say, Arise and take up thy bed and walk? May I say that the Lord Jesus still infuriates the skeptics. The Word of God infuriates the skeptics. The Genesis account of creation infuriates the skeptics. The Genesis account that says in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. That infuriates the skeptics. They don't see how in the world that could happen. But I want you to know in the beginning, God. Uh, the deity of Christ infuriates the skeptics. That God became man and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory. The glory is of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. That infuriates the skeptics. Uh, traditional marriage infuriates the skeptics. That marriage, biblically, is between one man and one woman for one lifetime. That's God's plan. You can't have a marriage. I said you can't have a marriage. I said you cannot have a biblical marriage without a man and a woman. The Bible says that God saw all that. And He said, Behold, it was very good. Therefore shall a man leave his father and mother and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. God saw that it was good. That infuriates the skeptics. The traditional family, the traditional marriage, the inspiration and preservation of the Scriptures, that, that infuriates the skeptics. Salvation by grace through faith and the finished work of Jesus Christ on Calvary, that infuriates the skeptics. There's always those around who are skeptics. In fact, in the latter days, the Bible says scoffers will come, saying, where's the promise of His coming? The scoffers have always been here. The skeptics have always been here. But I'm going to stick with the Bible. And then finally, I want you to notice, rooftop faith always exceeds the status quo. It always goes beyond the realm of mediocrity. Jesus said, verse 11, I say unto thee, Arise and take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all amazed, and glorified God, saying, We never saw it on this fashion. That's what I'm praying for this renewed normal that we're calling it. Without the touch of God, without the anointing of God, without the blessing of God, it'll just be a normal. I don't like the term new normal. How about a revived normal? A renewed normal? A refreshed normal? Something that exceeds the status quo, where when people see it, they'll say, God ought to get the glory, and, and they'll be amazed at what God does, and, and they'll say, we never saw it on this fashion before. That's my prayer. Let's make that our prayer in the days ahead. We never saw it on this fashion. We ne we've never seen the blessings of God like we've seen it now. I want to see the baptistry uh, stirred again. It's hard to practice social distancing and baptize somebody. These altars full. We never saw it on this fashion. Families rejoicing. Choirs singing. Testimonies we're going to be asking some of you to share what God has done in your life through these eight weeks at home. I pray that He's done something. I pray that He's done something. A renewed normal. Rooftop faith. Rooftop faith will take you higher. Rooftop faith will take you closer to God. Rooftop faith will produce something that when people see it, will not get the glory, that He'll get all the glory. And they'll say, we never saw it on this fashion before. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the faith of our fathers living still. I pray, oh God, that you'd help us as a church, as Christians everywhere. I pray, dear God, that you'll stir us. I pray that you'd change us, make us more like Jesus, teach us to walk by faith. And oh God, help us to work together like these four men who we do not know their names brought their friend to the rooftop, tore the roof off, counted the cost, lowered their friend to Jesus, and you met his need. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed right now. While, while we're coming to this part of the service, how's your faith, friend? You say, my faith's in the church. My faith is in the Holy Father. Our faith needs to be in Jesus Christ.
There's one mediator between God and man, the man Christ Jesus. You say, I've lost my faith, preacher. I have no faith in anything. May I recommend to you the Savior? There may be some Christians listening tonight. You say, preacher, my faith's been bolstered. My faith has been emboldened through this time. But there may be some who your faith has become weak and shallow. Why don't you come back to God tonight? I think of that prodigal son who came back and his father put a ring on his finger and shoes on his feet and a robe upon his back and say, this, this is my son that was dead, but he's alive again. And he welcomed him home. God will welcome you home tonight. If you're not saved, trust Christ tonight. Will you pray this prayer with me? Not just saying the words, but believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm sorry for my sin. Please forgive me. Save me right now. I turn from sin to the Savior. Take me to heaven. I trust Jesus and Him alone right now. If you're trusting Jesus and Him alone right now, will you write us, message us, email us, contact us, respond on our website, but let us know that you've been saved. And if you're coming back to God during this time as a Christian, then claim His forgiveness and ask God to renew the joy in your life. Father, bless the Word of God tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, we're not finished tonight. I mentioned this morning we're going to have a question and answer time. And uh, some of you have submitted some questions about, it may be about the coronavirus, it might be about the time that we're living biblically, prophetically. It may be something to do with uh, the services here at the church and plans that we have for the summer. It may be any number of things. But uh, I'm going to ask Pastor Grant and Pastor Seth to come up, sit down on the platform, a little different, a little different tonight. Uh, I'll tell you what, we've been way out of the box for a long time, so we might as well take a few moments. By the way, I think Wednesday night, Wednesday night, we're going to sing together. So tune in Wednesday night. You may never get to see this again. And I think, I think Brother Adam, Brother Seth, Brother Grant, and myself are going to sing in a quartet. God willing, Wednesday night. We've had a lot of requests, but we're going to sing anyway. All right. All uh, right. We're going to take a few moments, take, take a few questions. We're not going to drag this on. I've got uh, 714. Now, what else are you going to do tonight? Uh, we'll take about 15 minutes, talk about some things, some issues. Hopefully, it'll be a blessing to you. All right. I kind of feel like I'm sitting in your living room right now. All right, a little question and answer time. And uh, now see, if I was at your house, I'd have, I'd have a cup of coffee and a donut right now, and uh, we'd be enjoying that. But Pastor Grant's got a few questions here. Um, I, I know this, this has been an unprecedented time, unprecedented time in our country. I've never pastored through a pandemic. I've never lived through a pandemic. And... Um, I, I'm certainly, I remember preaching on March 1st, fellas. I preached on March 1st. There had been one death in Washington State. There were 64 cases across the country. And now we've surpassed a million and uh, several thousand deaths across the country. Thankfully, in West Virginia, uh, God's been good to us here. I think we have great leadership here in our state. And um, people have, have really shown discipline here, but we've had, uh, I think, about 1,400 cases, the last stat that I read, and 50-some deaths, which, is, which our governor always says is 50-some too many. But we're thankful for his blessings and his protection. We've had about a dozen people right here in our church that have had the coronavirus. And, um, and one of our, our ma members here, Mother, passed away from the coronavirus. So our, our hearts are heavy in that way. These are unprecedented times, uh, biblically, prophetically. And um, we want to just maybe field a couple of questions here tonight. And um, we've got this distinguished panel here. And, um, and just hear from, hear from our staff. And uh, Pastor Grant, why don't you say a word? Sure. Um, 
Of course, I get to be the interviewer, so I'll ask the questions and you guys can answer them. How about that? <laughs> Just fair. kidding. Um, well, as, as uh, you know, we've been uh, in these times been thrust into some new things as far as uh, social media, live streaming services. I often tell people we've gone from being pastors to learning how to be producers. And again, we're thankful for Adam Hager and all that he's done to help us in that because we'd have been lost in high weeds um, without his help. But, uh, but it is a different, it's a, a different thing, but it's a, a neat opportunity. Um, we're able to extend our reach further than just the walls of this sanctuary. Of course, we do that as a church anyway. But the question comes in, and uh, some have wondered this, but this question comes in, Pastor and, and Brother Seth, says, what feedback have you received here at RBT and heard of around the country of those who have been saved and reached or impacted by online ministries, such as Facebook Live and YouTube uh, church services? Well, Pastor Grant, why don't you take that question? I think you've read a number of these uh, sure. responses. I like how he lobbed that one back to me. Um, sure. Um, well, I was just looking there as we were coming uh, into this service, and I noticed some of the statistics on our Facebook, our church Facebook page. And I just wrote a couple things down here. Um, our church Facebook page has uh, extended its reach to over 23,000 uh, people. Now, that doesn't mean every, that many people are watching our services, but 23,000 people that are reached just through that one avenue, which is our Facebook page. And so I, I noticed as I was looking through the different services, it'll show us how many people are reached, and that means that they at least saw on their news feed um, our church service. And about an average of 12 to 1,300 people are reached and see, seeing our church services. It doesn't mean they're watching the whole thing, um, but it does mean that they at least see it and it goes across their their eyeballs and there are many that click on that. So as far as that goes, you know, that's a that's a neat extension of our ministry that has really not existed to this point. But we've had multiple people reach out to us. I think Brother Seth has some things on this as well, but just thinking of, of a couple, one, one young married man with children um, early on um, messaged us and told us how that the Lord has used this and even called this his church, even though he was not a part of our church at the time. Uh, he's used his church, this church, to uh, draw him back to the Lord, kind of rededicating his, his life to the Lord and uh, really had a desire to come uh, and be a part of church once things open up. So we're praying the Lord will continue to open those doors and those avenues. Um, some of our own church family that are far and, and abroad have tuned in to services that they never could be a part of. And I even think of some, uh, some of our shut-ins and these ladies and, and gentlemen. Uh, one lady said, my mother, who's been out of church for weeks because of health, she can finally go to church, you know, and, and though it's virtually, that's a neat, neat uh, thing and exciting they can be a part of that. So a lot of folks have been reached, and I think Brother Seth has has a testimony about someone maybe even even saved through that. I believe that question I talked about also around the country how it's been reached. And now I get made fun of sometimes for this, but I kind of, I keep up on social media, and I have a Twitter account and Facebook and a, a Instagram, so I can keep up with other preachers around the country and just seeing what what are happening there. I am the younger one of the group, uh, but I did see I believe. I can't remember where, where it was now, but um, someone called a church after a live stream service, service like we do, and they got saved over the telephone. And then also, as this was all heating up, as a uh, pastor mentioned, uh, back in March, uh, my sister-in-law's dad is a pastor there in North Carolina, and a man called uh, him and was just very disturbed about everything that was happening, very worried about it. And uh, Pastor Taylor was able to lead him to the Lord over the telephone. And up in Pennsylvania, my uh, brother-in-law's uh, brother is an assistant pastor up there. And once again, when this all was starting, uh, a policeman uh, reached out to him and wanted to have a cup of coffee with him. That's when you could do those things. Uh, but over a cup of coffee, he got saved. So it's just neat to see. I, I definitely think that the people, God's gotten people's attentions through this. And, and uh, I'm sure the, I'm excited to see one day what, how many people have been impacted through this and through how the gospel has gone out like never before on, on the internet. And it can be used for good if we allow it to be used in the right manner. Well, and it's a blessing like, like Brother Grant mentioned about um, 
some of our shut-ins. We've heard from Dorothy Hunt in Morgantown living with Brad there and Mindy, and we're glad that she's been able to tune in. We're glad for uh, shut-ins across our, our area here, but we've also heard from uh, other states. We've heard from California. We've heard from uh, Oklahoma, Missouri, all up and down the eastern seaboard. Heard from missionaries, and, uh, and so we pray it's been an encouragement. Uh, one young man early on had talked to us about getting back into his Bible, and um, some that came to our drive-in service at the Easter service said that they want to become more faithful again to the services. So all that's been a, an encouragement and blessing. And so at least for a time, we'll continue some form of uh, live stream after we come back, especially for those that are shut in and, and unable to get out. Maybe if you're uh, watching this, and, and a neat part of this is that you can also um, share these services with friends of yours. Maybe if you're watching and you've done that, let everybody know that by doing a thumbs up or a, a love, a heart. You know, you've shared that with someone who's watched it, and you've been able to reach someone um, through our, our live stream services. What a blessing that is just to be able to, to pop on there and share that with somebody that may not be thinking anything about church at that moment, but you can share that directly to them through Facebook, and it'll pop up on their phone, and, uh, and then all of a sudden they're seeing a church service, and they're reminded of what God's doing. It's been, it's been kind of a neat tool, and uh, God's been using that. Another question here that comes in, and many of you are wondering this, um, but just the question of what does the rest of the year look like as far as our schedule is concerned here with the different ministries at Ripley Baptist Temple? And uh, there's many things that go on here, and uh, we, we know that things are slowly going to start, but what will the rest of the year look like? And, and of course, there's a lot of questions still about that, but Pastor, maybe you want to start there. Well, um, so <laughs> I read somewhere the other day, someone said that the worst investment they made in, in 2019 was a 2020 calendar. <laughs> so um, I don't know. I, uh, we've had to postpone some things and uh, cancel some things. Uh, one thing, sadly, we've had to set aside is our, our second week of June day camp. We'll not be having that uh, this year, at least not in June. But we are, we are looking to some form of vacation Bible school, and we'll talk about that next Sunday night when we have our workers' meeting. I've talked to Randy Merrill, uh, and the musical Merrills are planning on being here uh, that week of July uh, 8th. Is that the week, is that the right week? It's the week after the 4th of July. They'll be here that Sunday through Friday. And, um, and so these are not written in stone yet, but we're, we're planning on doing some, some type of a um, reformed or retooled vacation Bible school. A little different than what we normally do. It would be more of a platform Bible school. It may or may not include our bus ministry, which... We, we hope that that will come along in time. Um, but we're looking at maybe possibly an evening Bible school. Not that, again, that's not written in stone, but more of a platform, hour and a half type of a Bible school. But it'll be quality. It'll be something you can bring your kids to, and it'll be a great time. Uh, but that's, that's one area that, that we're going to have to revamp a bit. Brother Seth, you want to talk about golden, or excuse me, young adults, not the golden years, the young golden, adults. I got promoted to golden years. Um, with the young adults, some things I was thinking, of course, we've been doing our Sunday school class. We have had several there on our, we have a group there on Facebook. We've been doing Sunday school through that, and it's been a blessing. We've had uh, some guest appearances by, by uh, Pastor Grant and Brother Mitch have done some Sunday school lessons for us. And for right now, with our services, I'll have to talk to Pastor about what we can do. For right now, at least this Sunday, I don't know if we'll have Sunday school or not, with the, the two hours of uh, uh, service and uh, being involved with the 930 service and all of that. But hopefully, and just this past Thursday, we had several jumping on a Zoom meeting. We had a great time with that. And I'm learning things about this. You know, I grew up out in the country there in Alum Creek. You know, I'm, I'm a young person, but I'm kind of a throwback, too. Some of these things are new for me. But we tried a Zoom a Zoom activity, and uh, we even had Ashley Taylor jumping on there. She brings life even to a Zoom activity. That was great. And uh, but hopefully here soon, we can do some activities. And here's just what I was kind of thinking with some activities with all this, maybe some outdoor activities. Uh, we'd already been talking about possibly doing some kind of a cookout or picnic. 
uh, out at the church property. We can even do that here in my backyard, the, the, the house where I stay here on property. And uh, maybe we can go on a hike or something like that. Uh, we'll have to figure out all, all that. And I was also even thinking uh, maybe we get Pastor to come along, maybe like a fishing to go fishing or something with some of our young men, some of our young young adult men. Maybe we can go fishing here in the area. I mean, Governor Justice has encouraged that all along. So maybe maybe we can do that this summer. Go just I mean, we have several fishing spots around here. We can do something like that. So outdoor activities is what we're looking at over the summer, and. Uh, we're also, we're still talking about what we're going to do. Last summer we did a young adult class over the Wednesday nights, and we're still talking about that, but hopefully, Lord willing, we can do something with our young adults on Wednesday night. So that's kind of what we've got planned so far. And of course, with the uh, the teenagers, a lot of that will be similar uh, as far as um, activities and things that we can do. Um, and I think as things open up, it may, it may unroll faster as things move forward and we're able to have more... Uh, more interaction and things of that nature, but uh, of course we're encouraging all of our teenagers to, to be here when, when they can for live services, I mean on-site services, excuse me, and uh, the refresh rally, and we'll do some things maybe after church services um, while we're all here, you know, we can get together and have a, a Sunday night after church, we'll call them snack um, and maybe maybe something that would we could just get together and have a little bit of fellowship and uh, and then and then as the summer goes along, we've got some ideas there for some outdoor activities and things that we can do. Um, we're not sure, and I've I've not seen or heard any word about the youth conferences and camps and things that we're a part of. Um, but uh, but we'll we'll make those available as they are available. And uh, and of course our bus ministry, as Pastor mentioned, we'll just play that by ear as well. And pray that the Lord will open those things up. Bus workers can probably, there's things we can be doing, um, whether it's texting or calling. At some point, you know, we may be able to at least um, go and, and see them, you know, at their homes at some point before we could actually pick them up and begin to ease back into talking to families and making contact with them. So there's a lot of things there that, uh, that we'll, we'll just have to unroll as, as it opens up. That's great, fellas. And, and, and in some areas, we were thinking about if we're not able to have Sunday school right away or run our buses. Uh, and by the way, our Bible school is July 6th through the 10th, July 6th through the 10th. Um, but if we can't run our buses, we were thinking about going into some of the apartment areas and have something like a backyard Bible club, like go in on a Saturday and, um, and just gather the children in, in some of these concentrated areas where there's apartment houses, uh, trailer courts, things like that, and just have a backyard Bible club where the kids can socially distance out in the yard. We can have a, a time of singing, Bible lesson, and um, do something like that. Very good. And, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things we can do. You know, we've done campfire services with our teenagers before, so we could do that again. Uh, teens, whatever it is, we'll, we'll have some fun doing it and uh, have a great time serving the Lord together. And I'm excited about that. And uh, so another question here that comes, and this, this one maybe kind of delves a little bit, bit more into doctrine, if you will. Um, it says, do you or do we believe that the coronavirus pandemic would fit... Um, as a prophetic sign of the last days. So would this, this event, this world event, fit into prophecy somewhere as a prophetic sign of the last days? <laughs> well, I, I think in, in some ways it could. I, I think we, we certainly can see through all of this. Well, the Bible does mention pestilence in Luke chapter 21 verse 11, also Matthew 24 and verse 7. It talks about in the last days, wars, rumors of wars, uh, pestilence. Pestilence is disease, out of control diseases. And, um, and, and of course, we were talking right before service there how we can see how easily the Antichrist will be able to step onto the world scene in these last days. Uh, for example, just these eight weeks, we've seen what it's done to our economy. How our economy has been devastated. Uh, our governments came to a, a screeching halt in many ways. Um, our lives have been put on hold. And uh, I think we can see where, let's just say, the U.S. economy completely went in the tank. 
And that would mean probably, probably the global economy would go into the tank. And we could see how a world figure could step onto the scene after the rapture and could offer as a super politician with all the answers he could step up as the Antichrist and, and take on a one world uh, political system. And, um, and so I think it's certainly gotten, gotten us all awake. It's yeah. gotten us more aware yeah. of things, whether this is a, a sign that Jesus could come. Personally, and I think, I think our staff here believes this, we believe in an imminent return of Jesus Christ. Christ could come at any moment. There's nothing that needs to happen Amen. biblically for Christ to come. Amen. The trumpet could sound today. God's not up in heaven uh, worrying, thinking, I need to get all of these things clicked off, checked off on my prophetic timetable to send Jesus back. He could come at any moment, Amen. and we need to be ready at any moment for Him to come. And fellas, you, you can dive in on this. Well, I would just say, of course, um, that we are living in the last days. And, um, and all of these things... Everything that's happening, I believe, in the world on the world scene is setting the stage for the return of Christ. And like Pastor said, it could happen any minute. We believe that. And uh, like John said of old, even so, come Lord Jesus. And um, all of those things that we talk about that could be signs leading up to, um, they could start unraveling very quickly and, and showing up very quickly on the scene. And, um, you know, someone asked me that this morning in the parking lot probably watching now, uh, before we even knew of a question and answer, before they even knew of a question and answer, someone asked me that question. Do you believe that these things are part of the last times and, and these are signs of that? And, and I said, well, I certainly believe we're in the last times and the things that are happening are definitely setting the stage and, um, and we just need to be prepared. The biggest thing is not looking for signs, but looking for the Savior Amen. and uh, pointing people to the Savior. You know, we can talk about Antichrist and and uh, false prophet and you know the world powers and all of that till we're blue in the face but what we need to be doing is giving the gospel to people pointing them to a savior that's soon coming and uh, helping people be ready and what a wonderful wonderful uh, privilege that is to share the gospel with people in these last days now, i've just been kind of thinking about that and to kind of add to what pastor grant said there um it certainly looks like we're in the last days, and if you read your Bible there, Paul and Peter, you know, they believe they were in the last days then. We've always been the last days, as Pastor said. We're, we're looking for the appearing of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and He could come at any moment. And uh, we just need to be doing our work now, and that should motivate us. And I believe, uh, as a part of that, this should always be motivation to us as Christians to do our job. I'm excited about going to heaven, excited about the Lord coming back. But we need to be motivated for those that are not ready. We need to be motivated for our friends and family that are not saved. And just think about this thought as we should be excited about this. No, we didn't live in the days of the Bible. No, we didn't live in the days of Spurgeon or, or um, we did overlap a little bit with Dr. Hudson and, and Dr. Rice and those people. We're, we're alive right now. This is our moment. And we need, we're the ones that are responsible for our generation right now. This, if this is the last, if these are the last days the Lord is coming back in the next few days or even tonight or tomorrow, who have you not witnessed to? Who are we not reaching out? We could be the last chance for someone. We could be the last stand for righteousness' sake in our country. And we need to be doing our part. And that should motivate us as Christians to stand up and to live right and to, to, to witness to someone. Be, be praying for these that are not saved. Hopefully you pray for those over this, the last five days when we prayed for people. But that, that's just something I've been thinking about this. We need to be, this should be motivation for us as Christians. That's good, fellas. And it's been a wake-up call, no doubt about it. And I think it's interesting, Luke 21 and Matthew 24, um, that when it mentions pestilence, when it mentions these other signs, these are tribulation period signs. Yeah. You know, m most of Matthew 24 is tribulation. Mm -hmm. The Lord's already come back. And so we're living, we're seeing the signs uh, listening for the shout, the season, the season is here. We're, we're in those last days, and uh, Christ could come at any moment. And uh, let's be about the Father's business, Pastor Grant. One last question that we have here, um, and this concerns our government, and it, it is that is 
And are we experiencing government overreach here in the state of West Virginia or uh, nationally in the, in the United States? Is the government overextending its reach on our lives? I, I think um, statewide in West Virginia, I, I've not felt that. I appreciate our governor uh, and the task force here in West Virginia. I've, I've not felt this, uh, this pressure that other states have had. Uh, not, not any time that I know of has, has the state said, you cannot have church services. Um, they've been very, very uh, wise about that, very open about that. And, uh, and I think all, all the churches, fundamental brethren that, that I know of, we've tried to be um, mindful of that. We've tried to be safe. We've tried to cooperate with the government, Romans chapter 13, and all of that. But I think it's time now for us to reopen. I think it's time for us to move forward. Uh, it's hard to assemble together over the internet. Uh, there are other states that have not had the blessing we've had here in West Virginia. They've not had a governor that led them in prayer on a statewide day of prayer. They've not, not seen that. And so we're appreciative of that. Um, now I think nationally, nationally, I think we're seeing, um, I, I, I don't think this is, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not a conspiracy theorist where I believe that this was all a great hoax and conspiracy. I think there certainly is a virus out there. It's been dangerous, and but has it been overhyped now? I think maybe somewhat it has, and I think now uh, people are uh, ha have taken advantage in some segments of government. You know, let's not waste a good crisis, and so now we're being, uh, you might say, uh, programmed, primed. We've seen social priming: say, stay home, stay safe, do your part. We're in this together. Uh, it's almost like you're being uh, patriotic by staying home. You know, let, let the whole nation fall apart. Let's stay home. And there comes a time where people need to live, and we need to get out. We need to um, get out and, and uh, serve the Lord, get out and be among people. And there's a healthiness about that, you know. And, um, and so I think we're hearing this uh, over and over again. Stay safe. Stay home. Uh, do your part. Well, it's time for us to do our part. It's time, it's time for us to get out. It's time for us to go. That's, that's just my sermonette right there, fellas. Go ahead. Um, just a couple things talking about nationwide. I, you know, I'm thankful, as, as a Pastor said here, we in West Virginia, we have been blessed. And I remember Pastor sitting in your office watching that uh, State Day of Prayer and watching our governor lead out in prayer. And I'm thankful. I think God has blessed that. And I remember that day watching that. But there I have been other states... Um, where there has been some uh, overreach, I believe. Um, I remember listening there on KMBC to uh, Brother Justin Cooper, uh, whose parents go to our church, and they had mentioned how they had attempted to have a drive-in service a few weeks ago, and they had been contacted by the mayor there in their town and said that they could not do that while the, the movie theater was still able to have drive-in movies down the street, which that doesn't doesn't make sense there. And, and there's been other places like that as well. And just this past week, a similar case, uh, some pastors brought a case against the governor of North Carolina, Governor Cooper, uh, no relation to Justin Cooper, uh, I don't think, but uh, brought a case against the governor and that say that it was a similar thing. He was not being fair and keeping churches closed while other businesses like Walmart and other places like that were allowed to have business. And uh, he, the, the, a federal judge has stepped in and blocked Governor Cooper's executive order restricting religious services. And this uh, judge made this statement. There is no pandemic exception to the Constitution of the United States or the free exercise clause of the First Amendment. And I agree with that. I agree with that judge. And, and I believe that, that they have put a, a hold there on this restriction, I believe, until May 29th. And I believe there's a case coming up against uh, Governor Cooper. And there's a, a couple other places. I, I remember down in Mississippi, I think there's a mayor that stepped in and, and uh, they had citations against a uh, church and their members. I think the mayor of uh, Louisville uh, did a similar thing. So I think in some parts of the country we have seen this, but I'm thankful that we were blessed. Massachusetts. Uh, Massachusetts is another one. We're blessed to live in West Virginia where mountaineers are always free. And I'm thankful for that and for our leadership here. But we do need to be in prayer for these 
pastors and churches in other parts of the country where they've seen it. They've seen a little bit different story. Yep. It's very true. And, uh, you know, Seth mentioned those mayors, uh, you know, you got your local government, you know, some mayors pressing down on churches. And I'm thankful that our mayor came here and was a part of our very, some of our very first live stream services. We were able to have prayer with her. She addressed our church, not only our church, but our, our town, really, through the pulpit of our church. Mm -hmm. And uh, what a blessing it is to live in West Virginia. Amen. And Amen. I've seen that more now in my own heart uh, than ever, not that I've ever uh, swayed in that way, but just to, to live in a, a rural place um, where we social distance all the time, you know, just out on the farm or out in the woods, and uh, that's nothing normal, uh, but a dirty handshake never hurt us either. Right. But uh, I think we just need to be wise and um, think we need to think for ourselves like pastor said we're being primed and and uh and programmed to think certain ways um you know we need to we need to learn to think for ourselves not just what what the mainstream media is telling us and i'm not saying we throw caution in the wind in any way uh, we'd be very careful and uh, of course not reckless at all but at the same time um, you know i think there's a healthy there's a healthy bit of um, boldness that we ought to have about the Lord's work, um, doing what the Lord has given us to do. And if, if we're not careful, we'll lose, we'll lose ground there. And we want to keep that. And we're thankful for this free nation that we have. And, uh, and those are my thoughts on that. I, again, West Virginia, our government's been great. Our, past, our, excuse me, our, our governor led us in prayer. And, uh, and that's, that's been a blessing to be here, be a part of that. And I'm looking forward to the renewed normal, Pastor. Thank you, fellas. And um, we know that government's not the answer. And God is the answer. Yeah. Thankful for government. I'm thankful for our Constitution. And um, our Constitution certainly gives us First Amendment rights and other, uh, the Bill of Rights, all of that. And, uh, and of course, Nationally, we're concerned about that, that uh, there have been some precedents set where the government could step right back in. And, 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 but uh, we're praying about all of this, and I think, uh, I think our Constitution, our, our founding fathers were wise men. They were very wise men, and they put checks and balances in place for our government, and uh, so we would not have a state-run church and all of that again. And so, um, so these are exciting days to live, and, um, and so we look to God. Thank God we pray for government, which was instituted by God. The family was instituted by God. The church was instituted by God. And uh, with God's help, we'll go forward. Well, it's been a good time, and uh, we don't want to go too, too long tonight. Thank you for staying with us and tuning into this question and answer time. Fellas, thank you for your input. Anybody else have a closing statement? I, w I was thinking too with this, and just this past week we've had those five days of May in prayer, and I think even as preachers, I know there's several groups of preachers across the country that have been banding together and praying together for our nation, and that's really encouraged me to see that. Amen. Amen. Well, let's close in prayer, and uh, thank you for tuning in tonight, staying with us here at Ripley Baptist Temple. Pastor Grant, would you close us in prayer? Father, Lord, we thank you for the time we've had here in church and, Lord, in living rooms and homes across our county and state and even those beyond our state. Lord, we're thankful for those who've tuned in. And, and Lord, this is, this is the best we can do assembling together as of this point. Lord, we look forward to next week physically assembling together. Father, I pray that you would just embolden us with rooftop faith. Um, Lord, help us to, to go higher. Lord, we thank you that you have blessed our nation. Lord, you've done that through the decades. And Lord, we pray that your people would, would humble themselves and to seek your face and to turn, turn from sin. Lord, point that out in our, in our lives. Um, nationally, yes. Uh, Lord, as churches, yes, but individually, point, point your finger at the sin in our hearts, Lord, so that we might have repentance and revival that only you can bring. Lord, that you be glorified and that your name be lifted up throughout the earth 
and glorified in all that we do, even here from Ripley Baptist Temple. And Lord, I pray that you just give us a heart to meet together, a heart to work together and to minister together for you because the field is wide into harvest already. It's past. It's time to, it's time to reap the harvest. And the laborers are few, Lord. May we have many that come to the front saying we're ready to work. And Lord, we'll trust you for it and we'll praise you for it. And we'll give you the glory in all that we do. In Christ's name we pray and for his sake. Amen.